Each of us is different. We all want confidence, but we all have different lives to live. I would like you to think for a moment now about what you want confidence for. Take a moment or two to think about that. Where will you use it? What changes will it make for you as you are more confident? Let's take a specific example. Imagine a scene in your head now where you are totally confident. Imagine you are seeing a film right now of a time in the future when you're using your confidence to achieve something you really enjoy. Do whatever you would do if you knew you couldn't fail. Just sit back now and watch yourself achieving excellence. Notice how you look, the expression on your face, the light in your eyes. Notice the life, the grace and the elegance in your movements. Let the camera of your mind move all around the scene and replay it as slowly or as fast as you wish, as many times as you wish, so that you become fully acquainted with every aspect of your presence during a moment of successful achievement. Notice how you're sitting or standing, your expression and your movement that lets you know that this is a moment of great success the concentration or happiness on your face, the grace, ease or commitment of your movements, the sense of mastery. And pay attention here to the sensations in your body and notice how your body responds to your imagination. Your body responds to all the pictures that are conjured up in your mind deliberately or accidentally in exactly the same way. Now you are going to use this responsiveness as you continue to visualize this time of confidence and as you feel the pleasure and power of it gently and precisely press together the finger and thumb of one hand. It doesn't matter which hand just do it. Whenever you want confidence Whenever you need to be reminded of your powerful positive potential, repeat that exact same pressure with your finger and thumb and recall this picture vividly and clearly to stimulate you to be fully in your own power and confidence again. By repeating this gesture every time you think of this image and feel these confident feelings, you are creating an association that will allow you to bring these feelings back whenever you want them. Don't underestimate the power of your mind here. Do this simple but powerful exercise and you'll find it gets easier and easier and more and more powerful every time. You see, the human mind works by association. When we've experienced two things together for a little while, one will automatically remind us of the other. This associational linking is very powerful. For example, I like traveling, so whenever I go to the airport, I feel that excitement even if I'm just going to pick someone up. The rule is, repetition is the mother of success. So let's just repeat this mental visualization. Remind yourself of that picture of you being successful and confident. It doesn't matter if it's not very clear at first. Each time you do it, it'll improve. Home in on the part of it that makes you feel best. Magnify that part. Make it bigger, brighter, louder. Bolder, brilliant, richer in your mind. Really feel it within you and around you. And when that confidence is at its peak, press your finger and thumb together again in exactly the same way as you did before. And say to yourself, I am confident. And then relax. You are making that finger and thumb pressure into a signal to your unconscious mind to call up that feeling of confidence and power within you. Practice this imagining for at least three weeks every day and then whenever you feel challenged you can repeat that exact same movement. Concentrate for a few moments and access your inner state of confidence. Do it 21 times in a row. 
Olympic athletes the world over have used exactly this technique to prepare to win their competitions. Now you can use it. You see, we're all born with confidence. Babies are confident. They cry and they expect to be fed. They explore and they have no fear. We all have the ability to regain the confidence we are born with. And one of the main things we have to do, which is ridiculously simple, is just to make room for confidence. People who've lost confidence feel fear, and so they often hurry to get past things or hang back and avoid them. They speak too little or too fast. And when they feel awkward because they're doing these things, they have a tendency to do them even more. To let ourselves feel confident, we need two simple qualities, patience and flexible thinking. A few years ago, I was giving a presentation at a conference. I was on a panel with two other speakers, and while they spoke, I was really enjoying relaxing and being a member of the audience. And so it came as a bit of a shock to me when I was called to speak. I went to the rostrum and looked out and saw a huge room full of people looking at me. All of a sudden, I felt my stomach tighten and my hands went clammy and started to tremble. I was very surprised because I'm used to appearing in public, so I wasn't expecting to feel anything like that. So what I did was nothing. I just stood there and I noticed my feelings. First of all, I noticed my breathing and I got used to standing where I was. I thought for a moment about what I was going to say and how much I believed in it. And I accepted that my body was excited. I was excited. I didn't have to call it stage fright or lack of confidence. I was excited. And that added a spark to my presentation. Then, when I felt ready to speak, I began. Now, this was a fairly simple little incident, but it shows three things. Firstly, you never know when you're going to be surprised, because I had no idea I was going to feel anything like that when I stood up. Secondly, it reminded me of the value of patience. I simply took my time to notice what I felt and got used to it. I didn't rush away from my feelings by diving straight into my presentation in a terrible rush. And when I acknowledged how I felt, it wasn't overwhelming. It helped to notice my breathing and to let that be calm as well. Thirdly, I reminded myself that the feeling I felt wasn't good or bad. It was just what I felt. And I could choose to call it fear or stage fright or eagerness or excitement. And I chose to call it excitement. I was reminded of this when I was sent a tape of my presentation and I heard the pause before I started to speak. That was the pause I took to make room for my confidence. There are lots of ways you can make room for confidence in your life. In conversations, we can practice confident listening. Confident listening is allowing yourself to concentrate fully on the other person's speech. It means that rather than preparing what I'm going to say, I really listen to you. And so often when I listen well, what I need to say, and when it's okay to say nothing, becomes much clearer. When I hear the rhythm of the conversation, I discover that there are plenty of times when silence is appropriate. By listening with patience, I make room for confidence in my conversations. The same is true with actions and feelings. Patience makes room for confidence. Turn your attention outward to the world while acknowledging what you feel. But don't judge or compare or worry. Stay curious. Don't judge yourself or others. Often you don't have to do half as much as you were worried about when you lacked confidence. And when it's time to act, what you have to do is clear and simple. We all use habits a great deal in our life. Some habits help our confidence, others don't. So to increase our confidence, we have to amplify the habits that assist us and eliminate those that don't. Much of our thinking is habitual. It happens all by itself and is just a string of associations. Mostly, we tend to be absorbed in a task or an interest or a float on the river of automatic thinking. However, we can affect it. Each of us is different. 
We all want confidence, but we all have different lives to live. I would like you to think for a moment now about what you want confidence for. Take a moment or two to think about that. Where will you use it? What changes will it make for you as you are more confident? Let's take a specific example. Imagine a scene in your head now where you are totally confident. Imagine you are seeing a film right now of a time in the future when you're using your confidence to achieve something you really enjoy. Do whatever you would do if you knew you couldn't fail. Just sit back now and watch yourself achieving excellence. Notice how you look, the expression on your face, the light in your eyes. Notice the life, the grace and the elegance in your movements. Let the camera of your mind move all around the scene and replay it as slowly or as fast as you wish, as many times as you wish so that you become fully acquainted with every aspect of your presence during a moment of successful achievement. Notice how you're sitting or standing, your expression and your movement that lets you know that this is a moment of great success. The